Hi, everyone. This is my last talk. I hope you all are ready. You got so much information in already. So, and you had food as well. So much, Anand. Right? I'm not sure. I'm sharing. I'm the founder of Commercialist. We are a company that is heavily involved in bringing uh, employment to India. I left my job in the Silicon Valley, the MIA region, and came back to India. So one goal in my life uh, that is to make sure that everyone has work. And uh, we have been quite successful in that. Uh, we have been giving jobs to people left and center. So uh, that's that's what we do at Commission List. Now I was a big believer that uh, if you have skills and opportunities, professional opportunities, nobody can replace you. Neither AI. So and that brings us to our title today. AI is not going to replace you. We are scared right now. People all over the world right now are extremely scared that uh, AI is going to take over their jobs. AI might take over their life, their love life, their world. Everybody is waiting for a Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, entrance where everything is taken over. Uh, there are robots everywhere. But let me bust this to you. It is not going to happen. You all can accept AI the way it is. It is not going to happen that. That myth that it's going to take over the world is not going to happen. We are going to be safe. Humans will be, uh, will rule the world as much as they can, irrespective of whoever brings any new technology. I'll tell you a secret about we technologists. We like to scare people to sell as much as we can. You saw the same thing happening with crypto last year. Now you see the same thing happening with AI. Everybody thinks that as soon as a new technology comes in. It will change the world left and center. It does change. The PR machines do work. PR machines go on telling you that okay, this particular technology is the end of the world, and like you know, everything is going to change. And these people make money. So this is how it works. What I want to do today is to tell you that how humans are very powerful. One and AI is powerful as well, and how we can collab together. So, by the way, AI stands for artificial intelligence. We all uh, always want to say, you know, I always like to start with why. Let's start with why intelligence. What is intelligence? So intelligence, by definition, is our ability to put knowledge and skills while completing a certain task. So uh, to give you perspective about how intelligence works, is, for example, imagine a canvas here, okay? A very nice white canvas, beautiful canvas here. I come in. I'm a bad painter. I come in here. I take some nice. Uh, let's say red color paint, and I just start splashing in here. See, if I was Picasso, this would have got sold for like a million dollars, but I'm not. So if I just start splashing in here, I have technically painted. Now, a professional knowledge skill painter comes in. He comes in here. He knows the exact way to take the paint out, to draw the lines, to do exactly, and boom, you see a beautiful painting happening right here on the canvas. What you saw here was basically a knowledge task being done. A knowledge task, a knowledge task when done provides value to the people who are seeing it, who are observing, who want to get the product. So, what is artificial intelligence now? Artificial intelligence is when machines can do can do tasks which usually require human intelligence. So now it's funny that you know uh, machines can actually paint your walls. Machines can do a lot of things. Today, uh, one of the most popular AI that we all know is large language models. Uh, like some of you might nickname it as ChatGPT. Everybody has played with it. Everybody is playing with it constantly. But the underlying technology is called large language models. I'll give you. I don't want to put you into a jar. I'll tell you how it works. You take a big software. Okay, let's call it called software. You put a lot of data into it. You keep constantly put a lot of data into it. There's something called an algorithm. What the algorithm does is basically it learns from this data. And it tries to predict the next word. So, for example, in all senses, it is basically very good at text prediction. Uh, but we didn't realize while we were making this that most of what humans do is just predict what what is going to happen next. Like everything that we are doing right now, every time you write an essay, whenever a thought comes into your mind, there is a chain of thought that come in, and we somehow humans manage to replicate that into machines, and we have really large language models. The applications are endless. Like I am just going to tell you, like AI applications. Uh, when I began AI six years ago, was very minuscule. Today, you have full self-driving car enabled by Tesla. You have large language models like uh, GPT-4, which are uh, almost.
ऑलमोस्ट लाइक क्रैकिंग ऑल द एग्जाम सैड है जेडब्ल्यू में जब भी क्रैक नहीं कर पाया मतलब वो उसके लिए दो तीन सुसाइड हो जाता है बट स्टिल लाइक द अमाउंट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी द अमाउंट ऑफ प्रोग्रेस है के आई एस में दिस केरी पावर ऑफ अस बट लेट मी टेल यू समथिंग दिस दैट यू सी राइट हियर इज सो पावरफुल इट्स वेरी फनी दैट आई स्टार्टेड आई डिड माय स्पेशलाइजेशन ए आई देन समहाउ आई हैव आई हैव अ फीलिंग दैट यू नो आई शुड लर्न मोर अबाउट द ब्रेन इटसेल्फ सो फ्रॉम द लास्ट वन ईयर आई बीन लर्निंग आई एम स्पेशलाइजिंग इन न्यूरो साइंस आई हैव रियलाइज्ड फॉर अ फैक्ट दैट ह्यूमन ब्रेन इज सो कॉम्प्लिकेटेड दैट वी डू नॉट नो एनीथिंग अबाउट इट यट व्हाटएवर वी न्यू वी ऑलरेडी अप्लाइड इट टू दिस सो जस्ट टू टेल यू न्यूरल नेटवर्क्स आर ब्रेन आल्सो फंक्शन हैव न्यूरल नेटवर्क्स and large language models ai basically also has neural neural networks so how it works is that humans discover something about their brain and then try because we have this god complex we try to emulate uh, like emulate that into machines and that's how all the progress of ai is happening any progress in neuroscience discovery happens first and then we try to replicate that into ai this is like our brain has billions of neurons we do not have the computation capacity to even touch that so to put you into a very dystopian perspective if tomorrow my brain is taken out of my head and put it into like a way with which you can access input and output either it will be uh, like 500000 times more powerful than gpd could so that is the capacity of our human brain we can do crazy things we can do this just to tell you like for a machine to do what i did right now it would take at least 100 years of more progress Every word I'm saying right now, I should tell you that AI is not scary. We all have to accept that as a new technology which is moving in a revolution because it increases our productivity. Our GDP right now, the worldwide global GDP is negative. We humans are not even productive enough to like get zero GDP. That we are not enough productive to actually contribute to the like uh, to the society. It's a very uh, fast concept of becoming a type one civilization. That is what all of us are aiming at. Uh, we are not, you know, in India, we do not have the concept of being like in the portion of science yet. But people who are in the portion of science know that what all of us are aiming at is to becoming type one civilization. So uh, one more reason AI can't replace us, uh, and this has been told in like hundreds of sci-fi movies, thousands of short films, everywhere is the common people know this emotions. Uh, emotions as a concept is very misunderstood. To be honest, emotions can be replicated by AI, but real-time emotions and different the, and the amount of emotions that humans have is very varied. If you know about nervous assaults, is uh, we basically have nine different kinds of emotions that we try to you know tell the world which are the emotions that we have. AI cannot replicate it. AI can replicate it in a way that you can tell it's okay, be happy, it will be happy. But being happy when your child is being born. Only humans can do that. Being happy when your best friend uh, wins gold medal, only you can do that. Only humans can do that. The thing is, all these things are directly applicable to our productivity as well. That is why AI can replace us. AI can replace us because one, it does not have consciousness. Consciousness is uh, people who have some knowledge about the brain is still do not understand how it works and how it functions. We do not know. It's like uh, this is like the phase that you see here. Back of the mind, I am like uh, I am like skydiving right now. That like to put into perspective, our brains still do, we do not still do not know how to emulate that into a machine. And how can we have tried doing that with threading? We have multi-threaded processors which like basically do computation twice, or computation twice, or like we have multiple time computation happening in the back of the machine. Like front running, so there is something happening in the front, and like thousand things happening in the back. So these things are still, still figuring out, which are we are taking up from neuroscience, and then we are applying to AI. Now, if you ask me that, then how did suddenly AI became so powerful? I will tell you a story. Six years ago, my college project was of a self-driving car. The amount of pressure and the amount of you know, knowledge that required me to make that car, and today, if I want to make that same thing, I can do it in like half of the time. Back then, we all were doing AI, but there was no progress in it. What suddenly happened that suddenly the world started changing? This is called RNA. And uh, there is a saying in Hindi, "Bolte uh, hain to ki khud ke pair pe khud hi kuladi maar de." So we humans uh, trained the AI so good, so good that it is so good today. So how does this RNA method works? Very simple. AI gives an output. There are human 
sitting there who told it that was the output good or not. And just, you know, the trick of the mouse is literally you rank the outputs one by one, one by one. That's it. That's what we see today. The difference between GPT-2 and GPT-3 is exactly this. Humans. We gave it the feedback that, okay, this is good or this is not. And with that, what we see today, all the application that we see right now is humans fine-tuning models to the SAD. What happened with GPT-3 is so basically we all started using it left, right, center, chat GPT, right? Left, right, center, we started using it, we started giving it feedback and everything. And we gave our data that, okay, this particular uh, response was good or not. This particular response did solve a problem or not. And with this particular data fine-tuned by humans, we trained GPT-4, again, fix a good idea. So every time what is happening right now, every time we are using AI, every time we are using for anything, we are constantly training it to get itself to a better position. And we will soon see GPT-5, GPT-10, we will see open source models. All of this point out to one thing that humans and AI are collaborating to make humans more productive. And this is where I will take you all uh, to conscious collaboration. See, we all have been, uh, if you have read Sapiens, if you have uh, if you have understood how humanity has evolved over time and how uh, humans as a concept have become so popular in the like, terms of those species, we all have been doing this because of unity. There is nothing possible. Like, if, if unity was not there, we would not have got freedom today. If unity was not there, we would not have got anything. Even today, we have to understand that what we have all have to do if you want to survive in this world or like in this world where we suddenly see how, uh, an intelligent being being formed on its own is collaboration. And it is conscious collaboration with AI, conscious collaboration with all the new technologies that come in. We are the masters of the tools. We do not realize this, but today we have the capacity to like just think of a beautiful vision and get it in right in front of us and by using mid-journey, dolly and all these kind of tools. You just have to think and just type it in there. Okay, I today I want to see a beautiful sunset. Without going anywhere, I can customize the sunset and get it in front of us. All these things are not possible today. We humans got it clear what it is today. Today we have given AI the eyes to see, we have given AI uh, the hands to draw, we have given AI the uh, voice to speak. We have given it everything. What we are doing right now is replicating our human brain into as much as we can. The thing is, we still do not know, like I have been said five times, we still do not know how human brain works. So as soon as we start discovering this, we, we figure out that okay, there is a way to give AI balance. There is a way that we can uh, give AI emotions. And slowly, 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 we'll be able to give AI something or the other. But still, we'll have our brain undiscovered because the amount of computation of brain does real time is still not, you know, we cannot emulate it. And that takes me to the... This is... So, uh, I do see a future where humans are symbiotic. Where, and like, I've been, I've been uh, moved for this, I've been like, told uh, not to speak about this a lot of times, but I do see a, a future where humans start integrating uh, technology into the body itself. I see a future where uh, we are, we are, we have the capabilities of doing crazy things and the people who don't do this will be left out. Uh, I, I see, I see, I see something where, you know, uh, we can solve world hunger, all of this using the latest technologies, AI or let's say blockchain. But I just want to tell you why, I want to write this speech by saying this, like saying this very uh, cliche line, but this is true. AI is not going to replace us or going to replace you, but a person you